Robert Frank is in Italy this morning with a closer look uh, at a high performance automaker that's betting big on EVs. Um, I, I just re read something for our taxi cab read about a Bugatti. Uh, Robert, if you, if you can tell me why someone needs to go 300 miles an hour, uh, let me know. And, and how do you keep that baby on the ground? You might as well put wings on it. Yeah, I mean, Ferraris look like a bargain next to that car, Joe. And <laughs> yep. this is the factory where Ferrari first started building cars back in 1943. But today they're going to launch a new factory that will build the first ever all-electric Ferrari. Now, that model won't actually launch. We won't be able to see it until the end of next year. So in the meantime, in that factory, they're going to build hybrid as well as combustion engine cars. Now, remember... They only build around 14,000 Ferraris last year. The waiting list for a Ferrari right now is up to three years. So the hope from dealers and customers here is that this new factory could add production. The CEO telling us in an exclusive interview yesterday that right now they see no slowdown in demand, especially in the U.S. What we see is a good, healthy demand in different countries. So the, the, the order book uh, is going well into 2026. Um, US is our uh, biggest market. It represents around 30%. So there is no sign of uh, change, let me say. That demand helping the stock. Ferrari stock up 27% next year. The market cap of Ferrari is now one and a half times that of Ford or GM. Remember, they make millions of cars a year. Ferrari only makes 14000 And the dollar profit on a single Ferrari is over $120,000. So, Joe, you would need to sell five Porsches or 16 BMWs to have the same dollar profit on a single Ferrari. That's a good, uh, that's a good business uh, uh, to be in, Robert. What, do you, what's the range? I, I, there is a starter Ferrari that, that I've actually looked at. It's a pretty cool car. What is that, about 250 Yeah, so the, the, the call starter Ferraris are, are now well into the 200s, but where they're making profits and why they don't need to increase production, they can still grow profits, is because of all the personalization that they're doing. So most customers now don't just get your standard retail price Ferrari. They're adding up to $100,000, $200,000 in options. Plus, they're releasing ever more expensive models. So a lot of the new models are four or 500,000 plus. While you're there, can you go over to the Bugatti place? I mean, it, it, so you already knew about what I was talking about. What, what's, it's four million, uh, it's a V, what, a V18, and it's, um, and it goes so to- Here's what, Joe, what's interesting about that is that this is the first launch since Bugatti is now owned by an electric vehicle company. Remac is, they make electric supercars. So the assumption was, that Bugatti, when they came out with this new release, it would be an electric supercar. Well, guess what? They're actually being more primal and going back to a 16-cylinder, naturally aspirated engine. And they're going to go even more crazy and pair that with a hybrid so you get 1,800 horsepower in that car. And this is proof broadly in the auto world there just isn't as much demand for EVs as people thought. And we're going to talk later with the CEO of Ferrari about whether anyone wants an electric Ferrari and what it might be like. You know, can you make a Ferrari, a true Ferrari, an electric vehicle? Yeah, exactly. You know, that thing, Christopher Nolan is going to want, I want some, uh, yeah, he's going like to, he's going to want some royalties on, on that thing. Christian Bale, I th it was going to step out of that, I think. I don't know. I don't even think I liked it that much. Did you? Kind of weird looking. It's like nutty. I don't know. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy where I am. Drive a... A lot of times I'm driving around in a little Cherokee. You know, six cylinder. Thank you.